Hey everyone and welcome to the first episode of my latest series which is called Real Resurrection. I'm going to be taking a film each month that has its 20th year anniversary that month and talking about it, maybe watching it for the first time, maybe re-watching it if I've already seen it. Now today I'm going to be talking about Starship Troopers which is probably one of my favourite and favourite guilty pleasure movies of all time. I love this movie which came out in 1997. I saw this film about five years ago and I've loved it ever since. I love re-watching it. I watch re -watch it at least once a year because it's just so much fun. Yes, the acting is a bit wooden. The special effects, most of them have held up pretty well because of the amount of time they took to do the effects for the bugs. But some of the, the explosions and the swarms of bugs have aged a bit. But overall, I think it is still great fun to watch. It has a great satirical, sarcastic sort of take on war with the propaganda. Everyone's doing their part. Are you? The war effort needs your effort. At work, at home, in your community. And everything. Whereas the book that it's loosely based on is normally uh, said to promote military rule, nationalism and fascism. But this movie has enough action and comedy to hide the not-so-great acting from some of the cast members. To be honest, I'm glad Casper Van Dien is the lead in this film. Okay, he is likeable, he is charismatic, and he just has much, so much fun with this film. And he still promotes it to this day. Just to let you know, while I'm talking about this movie, there could be spoiler alerts. This movie did come out 20 years ago. Now, this movie does have a love triangle. Now, most movies have a love triangle these days because I can't think of any other way to create drama outside a war film. But this love triangle, does it work? Yes, it works, sort of, okay. There's a bit of emotion, there's some bad chemistry, but there's still one scene that still makes me sad every time I watch it when Des dies, just because of that one line she says. Now, Because <laughs> I got to have you. <laughs> How is this film great? No, but boy is it fun. Okay, you've got the crazy drill instructor Zim, who's sort of this parody on Full Metal Jacket in a way, and quite brutal. You have the propaganda adverts popping up throughout the movie. We have the ships. We have the weapons. We need soldiers. Soldiers like Lieutenant Stack Lumbreeze. We're in the target area now, Captain. And Captain Carmen Abanez. This is the Captain speaking. Some of them even sort of based on real World War II propaganda. And of course you have Neil Patrick Harris, back before he was in How I Met Your Mother, okay, where he played an unlikable psychic best friend. And then of course you have Denise Riches, who plays Rico's ex-girlfriend, who then becomes his ex-girlfriend, who then, by the end of the movie, you're not really sure what they are. But she's in it as well, and but she doesn't ruin the movie. Because this movie is still, even though her acting is not the best, I still fucking love this film. I don't know why. There's just something about this film that I love. It's a great comedy on war from a satirical point of view. Showing the cost of war from an infantry point of perspective. Showing reasons why people may join up. Maybe the wrong reasons, maybe the right reasons. And what will cause people to join the military to get something out of it at the end, maybe. And it also shows how an unprovoked attack or some, a disaster caused by someone else can turn the whole world against that person, those, those people. And suddenly all the bad things have gone away and you're just focused on that one thing. Out of the ashes of Buenos Aires comes first sorrow, then anger. The only good bug is a dead bug. It also showed well. It also did well to show flawed military leaders and strategists, and showed the disasters that these can cause. But it also showed competent and respected leaders on the battlefield who might have to go above what normally they're asked of and are normally allowed to do to earn the respect of their men and to keep their men alive. Now I've spoken about the film. I want to talk about its future. Yeah, it was. The start of a franchise in a way, okay? It didn't do that well at the box office, Starship Troopers. It's become a cult following, and it did have a sequel that then was not done by the same director and tried to turn it into a sort of horror film, sort of, in some ways, the opposite 
of Alien, where Alien was a horror film and then they turned Aliens into a war film. Starship Troopers was a war film and then they turned Starship Troopers 2 into a low-budget horror film, which I have only watched once and will never watch again. Then there's Starship Troopers 3 with the return of Johnny Rico. He's back, okay? It went a bit too much on the comedy and really satirical point of view and was just, it was fun, but it wasn't a good movie. Starship Troopers is a fun, good movie. Okay, it's not a great movie, it's just fun, it has fun with it, where Dasha Troopers 3 went the complete opposite, and it's even worse, low budget, and it just, at some point, I was like, what am I watching? Good day to die, when you know the reasons why, citizens, we fight for what is right. A noble sacrifice, when duty calls, you pay the price, for the Federation, I will give my life. And then 4 and 5 I haven't even seen because they're animated. They continue with Johnny Rico. But I want to see a reboot. I think this is one of the few films which actually deserves a reboot and can be rebooted. Because there's so many ways they could do this. They're not, they wouldn't just be retelling the story. One thing, it could have a bigger budget. We could, see, we could see the troopers actually in the robot suits. Robot mech suits, which they're so famous for from the books. Which we only see briefly in uh, Starship Troopers 3. Another reason why I think they should do a reboot, is there are two ways I think they have to go with it. They, the first way is they go a parody of a war film. Not satirical, but a parody, but in a clever way. And there's two directors I think could do it very well and not be seem to be insensitive to war, which would be Matthew Vaughan, who's well known for doing sort of parody films like Stardust, which is sort of a, a different take on a fantasy film, and Kingsman, which is obviously a parody in some ways, but a really smart parody to spy films like James Bond. Or the other director who could do very well to, to take on this property would be Edgar Wright. Now, Edgar Wright has done some great other smart parodies like Shaun of the Dead, a take on horror films, and then Hot Fuzz on the American police dramas. Now, yes, you might say Edgar Wright only does original films. And yes, he mainly does, but I still think this would be great for him to do. After doing Baby Driver, which was great this year, I'd love to see him tackle a bigger property and one he could have more control of than, say, when he lost control of Ant-Man. <clears throat> the other way they could do this film, to be more like the novel, but not so, like, pro-fascism, and but just to be a straight-up freaking war film. In some ways, what Rogue One, a Star Wars story, should have been if they were allowed to go 15A and blow shit up, have explosions, have blood, guts everywhere, but unfortunately they weren't allowed to do that. Okay? They said they were trying to create a war film in the Star Wars universe. Well, I want to see a sci-fi war film. Now, you might say, yeah, hey, they did that with aliens. Yes, but that was on a smaller scale with one squad. They've done that with Predator. I want to see a full-scale freaking war, land battle, with, you know, bugs tearing humans apart, humans fighting in the trenches against these bugs. I think they could do a st straight-up gritty ferocious, heart-wrenching war film. And there were quite a few directors who could be great at it. Matt Reeves had just finished the trilogy of Planet of the Apes film. Yes, he only did the last two, but those last two were probably some of the best. Okay, I loved Rise of the Planet of the Apes. I still think, I think that's the second best. But there were so many aspects in War and Dawn that it could definitely bring two Starship Troopers. You could go straight up with a war film director. Maybe someone like Catherine Bigelow, who's done Zero Dark Thirty and Hurt Locker. Or what about Ridley Scott? He's done great with the Martian. He hasn't done so well trying to go back to Alien. But maybe another Alien-type franchise could work for him. And if he could recreate scenes from, like, Black Hawk Down, but with Starship Troopers, I would truly love to see that. So what do you think, Roughnecks? Do you want to live forever? Do you think Starship Troopers should be rebooted? What do you think of Starship Troopers? Do you love the rest of the franchise? Do you, have you not even seen the franchise? I think you should definitely check Starship Troopers out if you haven't seen it. It's a great, funny comedy film that still, I think, holds up today. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Link is in the description below. And make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more. Until next time, I'm Jordan Wiltshire. Goodbye. Soldiers like Private Ace Levy and Lieutenant John Rico. Come on, you ape! You want to live forever? We need you all. Service guarantees citizenship.